Welcome compadres. Today we're going to talk vibrations, specifically the vibration response spectrum and its usefulness for a structural analyst. So the vibration response spectrum is a quick and dirty method that structural analysts use to compare the effects of different PSD input curves. When we combine this with Miles' equation for a single degree of freedom system, we can get a acceleration response just knowing the PSD input value, the natural frequency of the system, and a transmissibility factor. So really three inputs and you get an answer. But more importantly, this is a quick method. It allows you to approximate a randomly loaded dynamic structure as an equivalent acceleration field. So what does that mean? That means we can just use G loads in our abacus model or FEA model to run an analysis. We don't have to do this PSD input curves, put them in, and uh, it's very cumbersome. This is a quick way to do it. And when you're needing an answer fast or you're doing a first order analysis, this is the way to go. So you can see to the left, this is a power spectral density curve. So this is a random vibration input. A lot of times you'll get these as part of your requirement. And what it plots is PSD versus the frequency. And you can see here it's usually plotted on a log-log scale. And that's important too. Um, when we go do our analysis, our example demonstration in Excel, you'll see why. So this kind of just gives you kind of what we're going after. So you can see um, given different PSD input curves, we can plot them on a vibration response spectrum using Miles equation to get the acceleration response. So what's the usefulness of this graph? Well, if we go run our modal analysis in an FEA program and we get a natural frequency of 1200, well, we can look at plot these curves on one plot and we can see that really the only curve we need to run is going to be vibe two because um, that's where we get our highest acceleration response at that natural frequency so really it eliminates a lot of uh, unneeded work um, if you approach it in this manner so that's the usefulness of this. So, you know, what if we had a, a component that had a modal a natural frequency of 500? Well, it looks like this curve right here, Vibe 3, would be the one we'd want to look at. And you can already tell just by looking at these curves that Vibe 1, we don't even have to look at it. And then Vibe 4 is not really important. Less frequencies are less than, uh, you know, maybe 250 hertz. So that's the usefulness of this analysis. So let's go ahead and show how to create these plots in Excel. So here I have, am given data points for a PSD curve, some breakpoints right here. And then I've also specified a transmissibility factor. I'm assuming 10 in this case. And so first thing I would want to do is kind of look at the curve and um, you can see this is our curve plotted, our PSD input curve. We have some high PSD values over here between 300 and 1100. So first thing I'm going to do is, is just kind of look at the response. Um, so I wrote a VBA function for that, miles acceleration. It's going to take our PSD input value, natural frequency, and then transmissibility. You can see here, this shows our response, acceleration response at those values. Um, but I want to plot this at different frequencies, right? So um, what I'm going to do here is really the only frequencies that are important are those that are specified between 10 and, 10, 000, and, 10 and 2000. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, create some points, data points. I'm going to go all the way to 2000. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to calculate our PSD value and I'm going to use a linear, I'm sorry, I'm going to use a interpolation function, specifically interpolation data log log and what it's going to take, it's going to take 
the x value that we want to find the PSD value for, and then the x values in our PSD curve, which is going to be our frequencies. I'm going to freeze those, and then our y values. I'm going to freeze those. And I'm going to run that down. It's going to calculate or interpolate our PSD values given this log log plot right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at Miles' equation. I'm going to calculate the acceleration response for a single degree of freedom system that I'm actually going to extend to multi degree of freedom systems. So let's see PSD value, natural frequency, and then our assumed value right here, transmissibility. And you can see I have basically calculated the acceleration response at all the frequencies between 10 and 2000. This is the graph. This is what it looks like. And you can see here um, the acceleration response peaks at these values. And it looks like the acceleration response is just above 12 G's. And so this is the one sigma acceleration response. So what I would actually do if I did my post processing as I'll show in later videos is I'd multiply that by three and that would be my three sigma acceleration response. And I would plug in this value in my FEA software, specifically using, using G loads. And then I would just pull in my stresses and uh, run an analysis uh, using my peak acceleration load. So that's it guys that's how you create a vibration response spectrum curve from a PSD input um, I'm sure you guys are curious about the code that was used so I'm gonna just step through that real quick this is the interpolation function and what it does is it just interpolates between these points right here on a log log plot using a log log interpolation and that's important it's not linear so just keep that in the back of your head. Um, you'll get a different response if you assume linear. Um, so what I've done here is uh, my arguments are going to be the value I want to find my PSD value for, my um, frequencies, which in this case is going to be my X values, and then my PSD uh, values, which in this case is going to be my Y values. So what I do is I specify a range I select those ranges and then I convert them into an array and then I go through and I'm just create some fail safe options here if my X value is uh, in this case um, greater than 2000 Hertz then I'm gonna say oh you know I can't interpolate if it's less than 10 Hertz well then my value is also not within the range so I'm gonna flag that and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to interpolate. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to figure out what points my X value is between. And so it'll loop through. If it falls between two values, then I'm going to interpolate using a log log interpolation. And then I'll return that answer. So this is the interpolation function right here. It's just the equation of a log log line. That's all it is. Um, so I'm sure you've seen this in uh, high school before. And then um, also Miles equation. It's just that simple equation. Those are my inputs. And that is the function right there. Real simple. So it didn't take much to do this. Um, so. I would definitely give it a go if you're a structural analyst. Um, this is very useful and a quick and dirty method to uh, you know, get an approximate answer in a short amount of time. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Adios.